So, Bob, let's start with you. Goodness knows you're responsible for a lot of investment. Uh, if we talk about an investor rather than a trader, what do you do with your analysis of where we are on the market right now? Well, the first principle is diversification, right? So if you have a diversified portfolio, you could just sort of go through the ups and the downs and you become confident about the other side. And then if you want to tactically move around that, you can do that. So you first thing you have to have a start with a diversified portfolio. And the problem is most people don't have a very well diversified portfolio. If you, know, if you have even stocks and bonds, let's just say you have a balance of stocks and bonds, if we're headed into a stagflation environment, and I wouldn't say we're there yet, but we're on the cusp of that. Stagflation meaning high inflation with low growth. Um, that's actually, if you go back historically and you study stagflations, the worst asset in a stagflation is equities. It's even worse if you're in a stagflation and you get an aggressive tightening in monetary policy. We're somewhere in the vicinity of that. So equities by themselves is not a safe place. It may work out, but it's not a safe place and it's not diversified. But even to hold bonds, bonds do poorly in stagflation because of the inflation problem and the tightening of monetary policy. Cash does very badly. Cash is not safe because you lock in a negative real yield on cash and you have, you have uh, basically assured wealth destruction. So you need some way of benefiting from a rise in inflation uh, to at least balance those two uh, forces. And so whether it's inflation index bonds or whether it's commodities, a diversified basket of commodities, you need to get that kind of, uh, that kind of diversification in the portfolio. And I think within the equity market, there's a, a, you know, I think in, the thing you really need to pay attention to is the cash flows of the assets. You know, we've been in an environment where cash flow didn't matter too much. It was, you know, where things going to play out 10 years from now. But if you're in an environment of high nominal growth, that, uh, that spending will be the income to companies and that income will be profits. And so in the short run, you, you'll face risk from the tightening. But over time, if you're invested in equities that have a reliable cash flow stream, you know, Warren Buffett said in the long run, in the short run, the stock market's a voting machine, in the long run, it's a weighing machine. That's because cash flows accumulate over time. So even within the equity market, I think it's important to be thinking about that. So Ed, as you look at the markets, the various markets right now, I, I heard commodities. Is commodities a good investment, do you think? Are commodities about to go up more? Um, they're already gone up a bit. gone up a lot. So I, I like the diversification idea. Uh, given uh, what we talked about at the beginning of uh, uncertain times, the uh, difference between the markets and the economy, uh, I like cash. I, I know I'm not really. I'm not getting ahead on cash, but I get my cash back. But you're actually falling behind if you have substantial inflation, right? Yeah, I, but I think inflation is going to be about four, about four uh, percent. But I'm saying just uh, if I was adv advising people, I would say. First, let's have a, you know, a certain amount of cash so you can sleep at night and you're not worried if your house price goes down or your stock values go down. Uh, but diversification, and uh, I, I like the idea that uh, hard assets or commodity-like things, the energy sector, uh, sort of industrial renaissance idea, uh, I like that some, but I, I'm not as uh, negative on the tech sector as the stocks are. I mean, I think I still think we're in, you know, a pretty rich technology revolution. Uh, but you know, that's the, the stock market, and real estate is, you know, it's too expensive. Uh, but you know, not the worst thing you can do. So is everything else? So is there, that's one of the problems, really, is that everything else is expensive. Uh, so I like your your diversification, you know, plus some cash in case something happens. But I I really. Uh, I don't, I'm pretty, uh, I'm not that negative on the outlook. We've been talking about various sectors here in terms of diversification. What about geographic diversification? What do you think about non-U.S. investments, Bob? Well, it's increasingly important. Um, we break the world down into three regions. There are three major monetary regimes, monetary and credit systems in the world. There's a dollar system, there's a euro system, and now there's an RMB system mm -hmm. uh, uh, in China. And, well, you, and so you can break the world down into North America, Europe, and Asia. It doesn't have to be China. I think it's Asia. 
And Asia has been a great diversifier um, for uh, relative to North America, relative to Europe. And so geographic diversification is going to be uh, much more valuable in the future than it was in the past because you increasingly have uh, China is much more of a, a powerful independent economic zone with an e independent monetary policy, whereas up to 2015 they had a linked exchange rate to the dollar and they, they really were not so independent. But they're, they're driving themselves to be much more of a, you know, the domestic economy is the mainstay. And so the more they have an independent economy, independent monetary system, and that'll spill over to the rest of Asia. Geographic diversifications can be really important. Just quickly here at the end, independent, but how independent? Uh, do you have to be concerned with the deglobalization of the, the Probably. globe? Probably. Uh, you know, that keeps the inflation rate a little bit higher. Uh, but, David, I'd like to say that, not exactly related to this, but, boy, we have a really a funny economy where Europe and China are in trouble and the U.S. is doing pretty well. Well, that's for sure. We saw that with the Bank of England just this week, basically yes. projecting stagflation or the equivalent of stagflation, it looked like. Yeah. It's a practical matter.